Hello, this is just a fairly casually made video because we want to show you um, a couple of things with regards to uh, selecting your platform. Uh, this is a, a spreadsheet tool we've built to help people to make decisions or, or to some extent to help them figure out what's important to them when they're selecting a platform. Okay, and while doing this, we'll have a look at some of the currently available platforms as well. Okay, let's have a look at this tool. Now, this tool is a spreadsheet, and this is a version of it in Google Docs, or it's a Google spreadsheet. So everybody can edit this, and we can share our scores. The trouble is with that is that uh, people can maybe damage the spreadsheet, so it's not necessarily reliable. So I'll put up an Excel version that you can download as well uh, okay to have for yourself now the way we've worked it at this is that you have a, a pair of columns for every platform you put your own scores here but before you do you write your uh, criteria that you think are important on the left and you put weightings for those criteria that's the relative importance of the criteria to you you then score the various platforms according to those criteria it will get a weighted score calculate a weighted score which is this multiplied by this and then it will total them up and give you a score for the platform okay so let's have a look and go th through uh, some options on platforms okay the first one i want to look at is uh, just say your institution has its own platform now we do have our own platform for MOOCs in sligo and we have one MOOC open to the public on this, on Lean Sigma, and we have another couple of restricted MOOCs that we intend to open up, but they're sort of on pilot for the moment. So you may have a site in your institution. So how would we go about scoring this? So, okay, well, let's have a look. Ours is done on Moodle. Moodle has an awful lot of functionality, so it scores high on functionality. In specific functions, quizzes, it's good on, particularly if you add a tool like Wiris to it, which can be added, which has great power. Peer assessment is good in Moodle. Discussion forums, not necessarily so good, because they're more designed for small group sizes, whereas some of the MOOC platforms have deliberately designed their discussions to work with large group sizes. It can issue certificates. Uh, its capacity, well, that would be would be a problem if we put a very large amount of videos on it or had a very high enrollment levels of the order of 10,000, but we don't. The maximum we've had on that is about 2,000 people on a MOOC and our videos are hosted on YouTube. So capacity is adequate for the way we want to do it. The cost, it scores excellently on cost. By the way, I'm scoring them between one and 10 here. It scores very well for cost because we have it there already and uh, there are very little marginal costs. Visibility, it scores poorly. It's on our own site. Not a people, many people know about it. If we want people to hear about this MOOC, we've got to use other marketing techniques. Access rights are quite good. There's various options for rights you can give to people who are accessing it, uh, even non-editing teachers. So you could have teachers in there that supervise groups of students but can't change content. Legal issues. Uh, it's not because it's our own site, a lot of legal issues don't crop up as far as selecting the platform is concerned. Usability, I've given it a medium score there. A lot of people find Moodle a little bit difficult to work with, probably because there's so much choices in terms of functionality. In terms of us selecting it, I probably should score it about eight because we're very used to Moodle. Ease of hosting, it was very easy for us to get a course up and running because we had the site, okay? Uh, constraints or restrictions and we're not there's not much in the line of constraints on us uh, so utability for the target audience um, which is mostly learners who want to learn it's quite suitable we're not involved in it for any marketing purposes or anything like that okay so that's how it scores now the next one along and these are the these First few are ones that I think you'd have to consider as serious contenders. Course Sites is the one from Blackboard, a free site from Blackboard, where you can move your courses online for free, as they say. Now, what's not to like about this? You get a free hosting platform. Um, 
Blackboard is quite powerful. It's been on the go a long time. There's lots of learning materials to show you how to use Blackboard. Um, it's hard to see what the downsides are of it. But Blackboard wasn't designed for MOOCs originally, so I'm not sure how much functionality like discussions are suitable for MOOCs. Uh, and to be honest with you, I haven't checked it out, but I, I'm, I don't know if they have any um, quality assurance requirements before they let your course go live. Do you have to discuss it with them? Are there any constraints with you? You'll also have to watch out for licensing and things like that. Now, I'm not going to go down through the scoring again on this. Um, these probably would be the types of scores that I would have scored it on, but you have to decide um, if that's suitable for you. Now, the next one we look at here is one called Canvas, uh, which is a well, uh, a more recent but very well-known learning management system, and they have a version for it where you can put up free courses. Canvas has a great reputation for being easy to use for both course developer and for the learner. I can't verify that. I haven't used it. It would be interesting to see what opinions are out there. They do allow you to host your course for free, but they want you to work very briefly with the course designer so that they're clear that you have good a, a clear design of what you're going to do. And uh, they may want to check out some other things, such as your learning materials. So that's to be taken into consideration if you go for Canvas. OK, so I put in some scores for Canvas there. Oh, yes, I should say about course sites and Canvas that they will score very highly on visibility because these are scores. In fact, I think there's even more courses on Canvas. It seems to be even better known. It's hard to know, um, and I don't want to um, damage either of their reputations, but uh, they're highly visible and should score highly on visibility there. OK, now Emma is a European platform that was developed through a European project for multilingual MOOCs, and currently uh, they have a special offer on, uh, and this is in the next few days. So if you're uh, up to the 30th of May, they have a special offer on. What are we at today? That's for the next nine days, uh, where you can get it for free, which begs the question, how much would it co cost on an ongoing basis, which would be an important thing for you to ask. OK, but it's certainly designed for colleges and individuals that mightn't have uh, the ability to host MOOCs themselves or to run MOOCs themselves. Udemy is a platform that's been around for a while to allow people to host courses and, and actually to make money from courses. Uh, and there are a few of these sites available. Uh, they are a place where people go to look for courses, so your visibility will be high. And they do have the facility to put up courses that you don't charge for and they and they don't charge you so these are worth considering so certainly would score well on costs in terms of functionality i can't vouch for them you may need to check them out or check reviews of them i would say that they weren't particularly designed originally for massive enrollment but they may well be able to handle that at this point. It has to be said about low-cost MOOC development that a lot of people are developing low-cost MOOCs, are developing them for specialist audience. So we're not talking about tens of thousands. We might be talking about maximum of four or 5,000 and probably typical around uh, 200 to 1,000 people in a free online course. OK, Moodle Cloud. Now, this is very interesting. It is free but it's only up to 50 users. So if you're considering Moodle and want to prototype your course, you may like to check out Moodle Cloud. And it has all the Moodle functionality and you don't have to set it up on your website. It's there for you. Of course, it isn't massive, so it would only be useful to use a proto prototype. Now, Coursemus is a more recent one. And again, this sounds like it's a bit like Udemy and I haven't checked it out, but you can Go online, set up your course for free, and allow people into your course for free, and there's no charges involved. However, it is more recent, and I would doubt that it has the same functionality 
as Moodle or other MOOC platforms. And remember that there's particular functionality that you'd be interested in a MOOC, particularly peer assessment. So it may not have that. So if anybody has any information on that, please feel free to score the shared spreadsheet. Okay, teachable.com is another one. I haven't checked it out, but it allows you to create and sell online courses, but you can also create free courses that people get, can get onto. I suppose the idea they have is that we let people create free courses, but if they start selling, we'll take a little bit of that. Okay, so that's another one. Now, I might just skip across this table here. I'm going to skip, skip past WordPress uh, and talk about two options if you're prepared to host it on your own site and you're prepared to download it. edX, that very well-known platform that has a lot of courses on it, has released the code for their platform as open source. So you can take the code and download it onto your platform and run your own edX platform that may only have one course on it or a few courses. So the disadvantage there is that you have all the power of edX, but you don't have the visibility. Um, it should be said at this time that a couple of years ago, Google said they were going to work with edX on developing a service called MOOC.org where people could up put up courses using the edX software, but that has not emerged yet. Moodle, the self thing, and I don't have a website here, but Moodle, you can get the code for Moodle and install it on your own site if you have the skills or time to do that. If you were thinking about doing that, it might be as well to use the Moodle cloud in the meantime to prototype your course. And then, of course, there's Moodle Academy, which is coming soon. Again, if you're thinking of using Moodle Academy, it's not yet available, so you might want to pilot your course or prototype it on Moodle Cloud. Moodle Academy will be a MOOC site where anybody can create courses. But there are charges on, on that, and a, it remains to be seen what those charges will be. Be but because you're sharing a site with other people and Moodle can grow, there are a lot of Moodle users in the world, this could grow to be quite a size. It would possibly be in time a highly visible site. Now, just to go back to WordPress, uh, WordPress is a website, a website hosting service. Its great advantage is that it's so well used, so many people use it, that there are a lot of plugins and plugins design, designed especially for teaching. So if you have the skills to work with creating a website and managing those plugins, you may be able to, to develop quite a good platform. And remember that you can mash this up with other platforms. I just came across an article there about a half an hour ago on why students prefer to do their discussions in Facebook rather than in the learning management system or in the MOOC learning management system. So you may decide I'm going to go for a website and I will put the discussions in Facebook. So that's an option for you. So those are a set of options and here, and this is the spreadsheet tool that can be used. By the way, and I should say at this point, you often find that when you use a spreadsheet like this to make a decision, for starters, you can write off a lot of the options because of some critical function that you need that the particular package doesn't have. The other thing is that um, you often find that these totals don't work out the way you wanted them to work. Now, if this is the case, you could say to yourself, well, I could change the scores or the weightings, but is that cheating? Are you fooling yourself? Well, yes and no. When you look at the scores and the scores turned out quite, don't turn out quite the way you want them to be, it's often because there's some critical criteria that's really important to you. And you don't want to use one tool because you feel it's weak in that criteria and you really want to use another tool because it's very strong in that criteria. This is where the weightings come in. Are the weightings you've given them really accurately reflecting what's important to you. So if the scores don't turn out the way you want, find out where the package you don't want or the platform you don't want is scoring highly and look at 
look at the weighting you've given that. If the platform you feel would be right for you is scoring low somewhere, look at that criteria and see if you're giving it the correct weighting. If you still can't get the scores to come out the way you'd like them to come out, it really means you probably have a strong bias that you really need to question. Anyway, good luck with that. As I say, don't put a huge amount of work into selecting a tool. Discount the ones that you don't think will be useful to you very quickly and then just narrow in on the tools or the platforms that you think you might use. Uh, give them some rough scoring. Uh, set the criteria that you think are important. Give them some rough scoring and see what numbers come out. It could be that you very quick uh, narrow it down to one or two or even just to one based on some critical criteria, what's available to you, how much money you have. Okay, thanks and good luck with that project. Bye.